Need a better way to get your bulk powders from point A to point B? Consider conveying the powders with vacuum technology. Vacuum conveying is clean, efficient, safe, and worker friendly. This technology can be used to convey powder in quantities from a handful to tens of thousands of pounds per hour. And if quality control is one of your desires, vacuum conveying technology is for you. These systems save time by eliminating manual approaches that can result in spills, leaks, or unplanned discharges. Vacuum conveying works with all types of bulk powder containers, such as tote boxes, drums, 50-pound bags, bulk bags, or silos. They can even transfer powders from one part of your manufacturing process to another. The first thing you need to know is that powders don't behave like liquids. There are also five major elements of a vacuum conveying system. Pickup point, convey tubing, vacuum receiver, vacuum producer, controls. We'll be referring to each of these elements in this video. VacuumX has identified 10 critical stage factors that will set you up for success in your vacuum conveying project. Number one, understanding bulk density. This is the weight of your material in a theoretical one cubic foot container. If you don't know the bulk density of your powder, take a five gallon pail of your material, weigh it, and divide it by 0.67. For example, 40 pounds of powder in a five gallon pail has a bulk density of 60 pounds per cubic foot. Different powders have different bulk densities. You need to know the bulk density of each one. We use the bulk density to determine the conveying velocity and the size of the vacuum receiver. If there is insufficient conveying velocity, your materials will not get to their final destination. If the conveying velocity is too fast, your product could degrade. The conveying tube could wear out, or the filters in your vacuum receiver could be blinded. Basically, it's not just about speed, but the right rate of speed for each part of the system. Number two, understanding the conveying distance and route. In powder handling, a straight path from point A to point B is the best, but sometimes changes in direction or elevation can't be avoided. Minimizing the number of horizontal and vertical 45 and 90 degree turns or elbows is beneficial because each elbow adds the equivalent of 20 feet to the straight distance. Back-to-back -back elbows should be avoided and vertical legs need special attention from the conveying system engineers. Number three, know the conveying rate. How fast does your material need to get from the pickup point to its destination? It's not always about how many pounds per hour need to be conveyed. Take batch operations, for example. There's a difference between needing to convey 2,000 pounds per hour versus conveying 2,000 pounds once an hour in five minutes. This is actually the equivalent of 24,000 pounds per hour. Number four, recognize your material characteristics. Some materials are considered fine powders and have a known distribution of particle sizes. Others are shaped like pellets, pastilles, flakes, or granules. Some powders will absorb moisture or have a fat content which requires special attention for filter and discharge valve selection and must be easily cleaned or sanitized. Other bulk materials can be abrasive or combustible, so compatibility with other materials should play a key role in system design. Number five, understand how the raw materials are being received. Will the process use bags, drums, barrels, bulk bags, silos, or material delivered directly from upstream equipment? Do you want to automate the process? Does human participation, such as bag dumping, achieve the convey rate safely hour after hour? Does the upstream equipment deliver the material in batches or continuously? Number six, is the material flowing from upstream processing equipment? The use of a weight loss or volumetric feeder, mixers, hoppers, reactors, or other equipment before hitting the vacuum conveying system will impact many of the other dynamics previously mentioned, including material density and characteristics. Number seven, know the headroom above the equipment that will receive the powder. Even the smallest vacuum conveying system for powders will require at least 30 inches of headroom. An experienced bulk powder handling company will have workarounds or alternate conveying technologies to accommodate low overhead situations, such as filterless vacuum receivers, scaling valves, and positive pressure systems. Number eight, understand the operation that you're feeding. Recognize the differences between batch operations, which are typical for extrusion processes, or auger filters, or continuous operations, which use a volumetric or loss in weight feeder to deliver material to the next process. Number nine, know your site conditions. These environmental influences, such as facilities located in mountainous areas or non-temperature controlled facilities, will directly affect vacuum conveying performance. Number 10, determine the material of construction for your conveying system. Can you use carbon steel or stainless steel? Or do you need specialized coatings? If they're graded for use in food, pharmaceutical, nutraceutical, or other high purity environments, the ability to disassemble and effectively sanitize the equipment will be key in realizing long-term performance goals, providing a strong return on investment, and maintaining product safety and quality.
Ensuring the system's equipment is made from the right materials and engineered for cleanability will lead to a longer life and fewer maintenance concerns. These are the top 10 considerations for designing a vacuum conveying system, just as important as number 11, which is selecting a partner with the experience, breadth of offerings, and customer support needed to ensure the system's initial and ongoing success.